Nah, my argument for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was, um, for some reason, a lot of people always have him undeniably as a top three or think he has a chance to be, like, in the GOAT conversation. And my argument to that was that I don't think that's the case. I don't think that that's the right way of thinking. I think Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and in my opinion, Kobe Bryant will always be above him mainly because of what they did in his careers. A lot of the – I think Kareem gets a lot of praise for what happened in the Lakers, but then a lot of people don't look at a lot of lows he had on the Bucks as well. I mean, Oh, you're missed, talking about Milwaukee. All right. He All missed right. the playoffs in Milwaukee, and then he went to the Lakers, missed the playoffs a game again and this was like in his prime so mm. a lot of people don't take those into considerations i think what people do with a lot mm. with kareem Abdul jabbar they seen the totality of his career thirty-eight thousand points five nba rings six mvps and they're like you know what this yeah, guy six has to- yeah six chips six six chips my bad yeah. uh uh six chips six mvps and they're like you know yeah, what this guy has so to be in the go- about some of yeah, they, that this guy has to be in the GOAT conversation, and I just don't agree with well, him. Kareem, out, out of the three contenders in this GOAT debate thing, do you know he's the only one that's double-digit on our NBA selection on both sides? Not even Jordan or, or LeBron have that. So he's double-digit mm-hmm. on offense and defense, along with having uh, the Kobe most Bryant MVPs. Kobe Bryant as well. Kobe Bryant as yeah, well. But, yeah, 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 but he's not, he, well. yeah, but he's not universally in the GOAT debate. He's not. But that's why I'm saying a lot of people disrespect uh, Kobe Bryant for those reasons. And uh, we talk about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, especially where for some of the titles he won. He won those titles sometimes as a second or even third option, right? So I, mm. I'm, I'm always wondering on the fact of if Kareem didn't have the benefit of playing with a Magic Johnson so that he could age, grace, age uh, gracefully out of the league and still was in a position to win the game to get him six NBA championships. I wonder what the narratives with him would be. I think a lot of times people see the six rings and be like, you know what? This guy has to be in the GOAT conversation. And LeBron, my, LeBron and Michael Jordan didn't have the benefit of playing with a guy of that caliber on his team so that they could age gracefully out the league and still be competing for titles. Mm. Kareem did have that benefit. Kobe Bryant never had that benefit. The mm. guy he had is running – for a lot of times, people knock Kobe Bryant for playing with Shaquille O'Neal, but nobody knocks Kareem or Magic Johnson for, for playing with each other. I don't mm. really understand that way of thinking. Because Kobe, Kobe could have had that same benefit as mm. Kareem and uh, Magic Johnson, but then him and Shaquille got into it. He yep. had to – He uh, Shaq left the team. He had to He had to fight and will that team to the playoffs consistently with a terrible supporting cast. As soon as he got help, as soon as he got help that wasn't even on the same level of a Magic Johnson, he went to three straight and won back-to-back. Mm. Kareem has never won back-to-back NBA chips as the best player of his team. Think about that. Mm. He never. So if you don't go back-to-back, I mean – so so Larry Bird is not that great because he never went back-to-back. Larry Bird, well, Larry Bird isn't in the GOAT conversation, so. He I mean, I, I don't think. Some people's GOAT I don't, I don't think, I don't think Kobe is either because if you compare him to LeBron, he has three less MVPs. You compare him to Jordan, he has, he has four less. And, uh, and Kareem, he has five less. I mean, it's, glad, it's not even close, man. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought up uh, Kareem because Kareem had the benefit of, in 1980, that was the last year he won an MVP, and that was the last year that they allowed the players to vote for him, right? So a lot of his MVP, MVPs came from the players being able to, and allowed to vote for that. So you don't think that if Kobe Bryant and even Michael Jordan could have mm. racked up a bunch more MVPs if the players and their peers actually voted on the MVPs? No, maybe, God, but I... maybe, but that wasn't the case, though. I guess that's it's not the point, case, man. but we need, but we need point, to, but, but people need to understand that, and that's why we can't just sit here and hold on to accolades as if this is the end all be all. There's a lot of things that happens that leads to people's success. So I would say that it's a bias, it's a bias award. But the thing is, did they win it or not? I but we just like, both acknowledge that it's a bias award. So if we both know that's a bias award. How much stock am I really going to put into that award if I know that that's how it's voted on? I think that if all of these guys are playing at an MVP level, then it, it is what it is for me. I think Kobe Bryant, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar were playing at an MVP level for a very long time. So I'm not going to sit here and just because they didn't win the MVP, I'm not going to crucify them for it. Like right now, <clears throat> Luka Doncic, like whoever wins the MVP right now, Jokic seems like may run away from it. I'm not going to say that Luka wasn't playing at an MVP level or yeah. JT's not playing at an MVP level. They all playing at an MVP level. Jokic just wins it. Like, it is what it is. 